Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to learn about how you are going to verify the response values within JSON, right? So there are multiple uh, possibilities around the validating of, say for example, here we were working with the get projects feature, okay? Now, here if you see the success response, right? So it's, it's uh, the JSON response. And say, for example, I want to verify that the project ID exists there in the response or a specific value exists or uh, a specific value is of a particular type, right? It's it's a Boolean, it's true or it's a string, or it's a number, etc. So how we are going to validate the response JSON, the values within the response JSON, that's what we are going to learn in this particular video. So let's quickly let me uh, zoom in a little bit. OK, and then here, if you see we have already worked with this response, right? So we go to the postman and we have already got this get project features. So what I'll do is I'll create a new folder. Okay, so in the Jira API testing, I'll say I'll create a new folder and I'll keep it separate from the response code test. So here I will say validate. Okay, and now let me duplicate this 200. Okay, and move this to in this particular folder. Okay, so now here, what I'll do is I'll minimize this section here. Okay. And let me say get project features. Okay. Now we know that if I send this particular request, we'll get a response, right? So you'll see the response is what it's a pretty formatted JSON response in the body, right? And you will see previously we had one result, which was verifying the status code is actually 200. Okay. So if we go and see the request editor in the test, you will see that this was the test that we have added for the response code. Now in the response, in the response, say for example, I want to validate that the project ID exists and it's a data type basically, then this value exists and uh, the feature, what is the exact value of the feature, etc. How, how we are going to approach that, okay? So let's quickly go ahead in the request and uh, then start writing our test cases here okay so now if we have to approach this from scratch okay you have the default snippets already available within your postman so if you scroll in the right hand side if you'll see that this arrow button there okay and this is the arrow button right and if you simply click on this arrow button then it will open this particular section right so here you will see that response body right we are we are verifying different things in the response body you can do a JSON value check. You can do a contain string or you can uh, check that the body is equal to a string, right? We are do, we are working with the JSON value check, right? So in the JSON, I'm interested in validating a particular value for a particular tag. So let's quickly, rather than going with the snippet, let's quickly write the whole test, right? So you understand. Now, in order to write any test within Postman, we start with PM, right? PM is an, is an object when which will give access to all the methods that are available right so the test will be pm dot test right so when you say test will accept the name of the test and the callback function right so this is basically what we were doing so the name and the callback function right so we will define in the callback function so first thing we'll say is the name of the test so i'll say validate json value in response just generic at the moment okay but we can we will update it later to have a more specific test name as per specific requirement that you have okay so now the next thing is basically so we have given the name the next thing is the function so we can simply say okay function uh, the callback function and then specify the callback function within the parenthesis or we can change it to the arrow function simply removing that keyword and then having that arrow okay so same thing this is more refined format of it. so now the next thing is basically we are validating the json value first thing we have to do is we have to get the response the json response as a javascript object so we can traverse through and see the exact value okay for example if we go to the response here let me send it and go to the body okay so this is a json right this is the json response that we are getting now we can't directly traverse through and check that okay within features the the project id i want i'm looking for this 1001 if i'm going to validate that right so you know that within features there is a array right so this square bracket means that there are, this is array and then it has different elements within it right 
within this particular array. So if I have to validate something, I have to convert this JSON or uh, store it as a JavaScript object so I can traverse it, right? Which we have already understood in e initial videos. So what I'll do is first thing is I'll get it as a JavaScript object. So I'll store, I'll uh, declare a variable. I'll say response, okay? Name as response for the variable. And then we will simply, we know that in the object PM object, we have this PM dot response, which is the property. And then if we say dot JSON within this method, within the postman, we'll say dot JSON. This method, what it does is if you just hover over, you will see that this will convert or this will get the JSON, right? So it gets a response body as a JavaScript object. Okay. And then stores into, into this vari variable. Now we can use uh, this variable to traverse through that JavaScript object and validate the actual value is there, right? So if you want to see that on the console, we'll simply go ahead and log it. So we'll say console.log response and let me run this, open the console and I'll clear the console, send it so that you can see the response getting logged here, right? So you'll see that it is logged with all the details, right? And everything is a JavaScript object, right? So now we can basically write the test against it. Okay, so let me remove this console here. So now in order to write test, we'll simply say PM dot expect is another property, right? So we are expecting something, right? So we, we are expecting, we are writing a test. So we'll say PM dot expect and then within PM dot expect, we'll simply write what we are trying to validate. So we are validating, we are expecting. So first thing we, will say response and then dot so because this response is a javascript object now in order to traverse through this or a particular value say for example in the response i am trying to validate that the project id okay the project id is actually one one triple zero one okay so there are multiple project ids here so in the first instance you will see there is a project id then there is a, another section wherein there is a same project id so where exactly you are looking for that the project id is one we have to be specific and then write our script okay accordingly so what we have to do here is that we know that we have the response now okay so now we'll say response and then we have features right so response dot features Okay, so I'll simply copy the features, right? And features is an array, right? So basically there are values within that. This is a square bracket. So in order to get or fetch the first instance of the feature, we have to specify what? We have to specify the index of the first element, right? We have seen that in the JavaScript array that index starts from zero. So we'll simply say, okay, we are trying to validate the values in the first instance here so for example this project id state etc right so we'll say features and then square bracket zero and then dot right so then we'll be able to traverse below this first element right so we are we are validating the project id and then we'll say dot project id okay let me close it now and then what we are trying to expect so pm dot expect that this particular value rest in the response in the first array element okay the project id then we'll say to equal and what exactly we are trying to validate that it it is actually equal to a particular number okay so which is one triple zero one okay and that's pretty much it so this is the test that we have to write okay so pm dot expect that this particular value equals the value okay so now let's run this and see the response and the re the results the test results so i have executed that in the test results you will see the validate json value in response and it actually passed so if you go to the console here okay let me clear it send it again and if you go to the details basically in the response body you will see the raw format here but let's change something right so let's try to fail this particular test i'll change this particular value okay and then send it again so that assertion fails and we are able to see that the json value in response failed so assertion expected one triple zero one but equal to one double zero one okay so now you know that this is how we are going to validate any particular value in the response okay now say so for example i want to validate something else okay so for example, state or localized name, anything that you want to validate, you can basically write similar tests to validate those details. Now, the next very important thing that you might be interested in 
that this is the value you are validating the exact value okay within the json now if say for example i want to validate that this particular state value is a string okay or a particular data type how we are going to do that let's quickly understand that as well okay so simply same approach so we'll say pm dot expect okay and then what we are validating we are saying that response say for example this value we are saying that this should be a number okay and then we say dot two and then we have a property b okay so we have a property b to b and then dot a okay so you'll see that it is basically very self-explanatory so you'll just say pm dot expect what you are expecting to be a and then whatever you can have it a string or number whatever you are expecting right to be a and then within the quotes you just say what it is it is is it a number if it is a number then it will pass otherwise it will fail okay similarly if i am expecting that some other value to be a string okay so i can say what is the value that i'm looking for which is a string so a state right so i can say okay i want to check that state the response in the state is actually a string because this enabled is a string so i can quickly go ahead and change this so i'm saying response dot features and the first value state to be a string right so i'll change that here right so that's pretty much what you are going to do in order to expect a particular data type in the response as well so if i send this you will see that because i have put all those expect statements in just one test you will see that okay i think i haven't changed that okay yes let me change it to one triple zero one okay so you'll see that now it is passing okay but if i say for example i change this to number okay now because this is all you should actually segregate these test cases into different sections so that you know that yeah actually this this is the value pass this is a value data type test okay so otherwise this is confusing right so we are saying that validate json value in response and then we are validating a lot more things into the same test right so if i send this now you will see that validate json value in response assertion expected enabled to be a number okay so this one failed because it is actually coming as string but i am expecting it as a number okay so this is how we are going to tackle the validation of the response within postman the json response within postman be it a specific value be it a type of or data type of that particular value okay it could be you know number string boolean you can basically have any data type that you want to specify there and you can also validate array etc within the responses okay so this is basically how you are going to approach the json value in response now it's always a better idea to segregate this okay so for example i have kept it in same test but ideally you should just create a separate test okay and then provide the name of the test okay json something data type okay and then callback function and then actually validate that okay so in this case what will happen is it will be treated as separate test okay and you will see a separate test for a value and a separate test for the actual data type validation now there is a bit of problem here this won't work okay and why it won't work we will understand in the next video okay so that's all for this video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching